answer key to the algebra 4.2 through 4.4 review. Graphing equation from section 4.2. We graphed using tables here. So first we rewrote this equation in y equals form. Uh, do so here to get y by itself. Let's subtract 2x. So y equals 4 minus 2x's. Or, or another way to write that is negative 2x plus 4. And table of values for x and y. And we chose some simple, easy to use x values like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And we plug the x's in for y, get some points. So when we plug in negative 2, you get 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Now we'll plot these points. Negative 2, comma 8, back to up 8. Oh, that's off the graph. We'll just leave that in B for a second. Negative 1, 6, minus 1, up 6, 0, 4, 1, 2, 2, 0. And draw. Draw. This is an elephant walks in t hours so given by the function d equals 5t. d equals 5t. The elephant walks for two and a half hours. Graph the function and identify its domain and range. The elephant walks <clears throat> for two and a half hours is a pretty important piece of knowledge. So it tells us the maximum time that it's going to walk for. Um, when I look at this problem, I see graph the function and identify its domain and range. Let's graph. Um, T is time, generally stands for our independent variable. We'll have time down here, we'll have distance. the y-axis, and let's make a table of possible values here. So I have these, these, and I know the least amount of times I can walk, you can just not walk, you just not spend any time walking, zero. That means it goes zero miles. Um, the most amount of time it can walk is two and a half hours. And how far does it walk? We'll plug in two and a half into the function get 5 times 2.5, which is 12.5 miles. And let's pick some other values in here just in case. So it can walk, say, one hour and go for 5 miles. It could also walk for two hours and go for 10 miles. It could not walk more than 2.5 because that's all the function says, so we're bounded by 2.5, which is maximum time. So we can plot these points. So when t is 0, d is 0. When t is 2.5, d is 12.5. We go one hour, walks five miles. Um, and walk two hours, that's ten miles. And let me change these so that they actually press One, two, five, and ten. And we can draw a line. those points. Notice that my line ends at two and a half because it can't we can't walk past, walk for more than two and a half hours. <clears throat> this leaves us with now identifying the domain and range. So domain or the x values that we'll possibly get or in this case p values. On our we can find those by looking at all the x's that get graphed. So I can start graphing x's at 0, and I have to stop graphing at 2 and a half. So I want to represent that t can be between two numbers. And we use between as a compound inequality, the two less than or equal two symbols. It's between 0 and 2 and a half. 
I represent that with the yellow line, the yellow highlight. Range is Y's, or in this case, these. We'll play that same game. Of where do, where's Y stuck between? Well, the least distance I can move is zero, and it can walk all the way up. So we get to 12 and a half, because that was the maximum distance we could So the distance walk is stuck between walking no miles or walking 12 and a half. Find the x and y intercepts. Recall from class that the x intercept we get when we have no y value when it's equal to zero. So we take 3x minus substitute zero for y. That's three. Or just one. Also notice. If I want to write, when I want to write the x-intercept as a coordinate, I know x is 1 and y is 0. So my coordinate will be x is 1, y is 0. Similarly, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So I'll take that same equation and now substitute 0 in flat. So it's negative 3, or the coordinate, x is 0, y is negative 3. Turn the page. <clears throat> Our cycling company pays $1 per used inkjet cartridge and $2 per used laser cartridge. The company paid a customer $14. This situation is given by... This function, x plus 2y equals 14, where x is the number of inkjets, cartridges, and y is the laser cartridges. First, use the intercepts to graph the equation. So let's find the x and y intercepts. The x-intercept for y is 0 is x plus 0 equals 14. x is 14, it crosses the x-axis at 14. The y-intercept is when x is 0, or 0 plus 2y equals 14, y is 7. So we'll put a dot at the y-intercept of 7. Is a draw line. <clears throat> to find four possibilities, well, any the combinations of inkjet and laser cartridges that add up to 14 are given by points on this line. So let's find four possibilities or four points on this line. Um, two points we already found. We found the, say we found the x-intercept, which was when x is 14, or the ink jet cartridges. We have 14 ink jet and zero laser cartridges. We have the y-intercept, which is when there are when x is zero, so zero ink jets and seven lasers, and we can find any other points on this line. Some nice points that I see might be right here, 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 where we're crossing, uh, where we're crossing nice, uh, crossing the uh, intersection of the grids here. I'll pick two, like this one, four, comma, five, 
10, comma, 2, which says that we have another combination of 4 inkjet and 5 laser cartridges, or how about 10 inkjet and 2 laser cartridges. These combinations coming from the points on my graph. Calculating slope, slope formula, y2 minus Or if I pick this to be number two, be number one, first and second points, then slope better be equal to, say, negative one minus negative one, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Minus negative plus positive, zero over negative 15 is zero. Similarly, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 minus a negative. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. 4 plus 2 is 6. Negative 9 over 6 reduces to negative 3. Lastly, this graph shows the ticket sales for a school dance on day 1, 3, 6, and 9. It says, describe the rates of change in ticket sales with respect to time. Um, qualitatively, or just by just kind of how it looks, uh, we could say that we could say that the ticket sales are increasing from day one to day three because we're slope positive. It's going up. Slope is positive. Decreasing from day three into day six. And then increasing again from day six to day nine. Kind of more maybe more numerically, getting actual numbers for this, we calculate the slopes of each of these segments. Um, we could say that no, we don't really need to do that. We'll just describe. We need to use words to describe. The rates of change between the slopes of these. So I might write that from day one to day three, sales increase. I know that because the slope is positive. From day three to day six, sales decrease because the slope. And lastly, from day six to day nine, sales increase. Very qualitative descriptions.
you've come up with actual values for the slope, for the slope by using the slope formula on the points, or since I just asked you to describe, just be very, be more 